making a steam plant using three Cotswold Heritage steam engines. And in this episode, which is part six, I will be making the aluminium top caps for the condenser and the water tank. The first thing to do was to go to Blackgate's Engineering and buy the parts. This is a piece of one inch diameter copper tube from which I will make the condenser chimney. This satin varnish, by the way, is not for this job, it's for another job. And please be aware that Blackgate's Engineering cannot send paints and varnishes via the postal system. I also bought one of these kind of scribers. I like this type with the right angled point. It makes it much easier to stick in your hand. I also needed a quarter by 40 threads per inch plug tap, but this one has a point, which would prevent me from tapping a hole all the way to the bottom. So I ground the end of it flat. And this is a carbide tipped round nose tool, and they're very durable are these type of tools, so I bought one of those too. I took the opportunity to just stock up on parts in my workshop that I'm running out of, so here are a collection of split pins and taper pins. I bought these parts mainly for the Hogwarts Castle project that I'm currently on with. But what I really went up to Blackgate's engineering for was this. Traditionally at Blackgate's engineering, they always wrap pieces of metal in newspaper because they have sharp edges. They're also usually oily, particularly steel. This clip is a bit self-indulgent and playing past the parcel without actually having to pass the parcel to anyone else. And look what's inside. Two very nicely cut pieces of aluminium, three inches in diameter and five eighths of an inch thick. And I'm going to use these to make the top caps for the condenser and the water tank. Why use aluminium? Well, the top of the boiler is aluminium, so they will all match. And once the copper parts are painted black to match the boiler, I think the overall visual effect will be quite good. On some plants, it's okay to leave the water tanks in copper, but in this case, they need to be black. To start the machining operation, I'm using the tailstock chuck to position the blank in the forge or chuck. I'm using my old Smart and Brown 1024 lathe, which is the larger of the two lathes that I have, mainly because this blank will not fit in the three jaw chuck on my Boxford lathe, and unfortunately, I do not have any outside jaws for that chuck. The first part of the job is to take a facing cut across the aluminium bar. Once I'd faced the aluminium bar stock, because I was cutting on the outside edge, I slowed the lathe down. And this is the part of the aluminium cap that fits into the copper part. So I need to turn this to an accurate fit. It needs to be a smooth push fit into the top of the copper, not too tight and not too slack. Please insert a girlfriend joke here. This particular cutting tool does not really cut very well on a left hand cut, but it cuts very well on a right hand cut. So I'm just pulling it back towards the right and I get a good finish. The question is now, does this cap fit in the copper tube? I will try it. This piece of copper tubing is not the condenser. It's the water tank, but it's the same size, so it's okay as a gauge. In this clip, I'm using a file to remove the sharp edge. And please note, whenever you file in the lathe, make sure the file has a substantial handle. Time to fit the component the other way around in the chuck, and I'm using a soft hammer just to seat it and make sure it's square with the jaws. And once again, the first thing to do is to take a facing cut across the front of the work. This top cap is for the condenser, and it needs to be machined to look just about the same as the one on the top of the boiler, except smaller. You may have noticed that I keep squirting the aluminium with something. This is WD-40. Paraffin, or WD-40, or white spirit, is the best cutting lubricant I've found for aluminium. I'm using WD-40 because it's conveniently in an aerosol can. Time now to first of all centre drill the piece of aluminium and drill through it a couple of drill sizes below one inch. And that is because if I drilled the hole all the way through using a one inch drill, apart from the fact that the tube would be a bit of a rattle fit, it would fall all the way through into the condenser. I'm now using a boring tool part of the way through the aluminium to make it the correct size to be a snug fit for the chimney tube. That's not the lathe wobbling by the way, I've just kicked the tripod, as it's very close to where I'm working. Time for another test fit using the copper tubing, and yes, it's very nearly there. So I set the hand wheel to two thousandths of an inch. But don't forget, when you set the hand wheel to two thou, it will actually remove four thou from the hole. The final test fit using the copper pipe confirms that the hole's the right size. So that's the inside done, now it's time to turn the outside. Plenty of lubricant and a very sharp cutting tool is the order of the day. I need to get a good finish on this component. I almost forgot what I need to do with this component using a milling cutter in the milling machine is mill a deep slot and this will clear the fitting in the copper tube. The steam inlet union on the condenser needs to be as near the top as possible. 
but I also need to leave a generous amount of metal on the top cap so that it pushes firmly into the copper tank. In this clip I put the part in place so you can see the effect of what it's going to be like. I will shorten the chimney tube to be at the same height as the boiler chimney and I will also make a brass ring just like the one on the boiler to fit around the top. One down, one to go. Time now to make the cap for the water tank. More or less the same procedure so I'm not going to labour the point by showing every step. The main difference between this part and the previous one is that this top cap doesn't have a big hole in the middle and it doesn't need to be a tight fit on the copper tank. So here are the finished items. I've only just started the polishing process, there's a bit more to do yet. But I think they look okay, and when you look at them at the side of the boiler, they're quite a good match. There's a final machining operation to do on the condenser top cap. I need to just reprofile it slightly and make it a bit thinner to match the top cap on the water tank. But I'll show that in the next episode, and that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.